In this problem, we're going to take the things that we've learned already and combine them together. A bicycle steadily speeds up from rest to 12 meters per second during an 8 second time interval. Alright, so this is our first complete problem. And complete problems require us to find three given. I've got two highlighted already, so let's start with those. So, speeds up from rest to 12 meters. 12 meters per second. That 12 meters per second sounds like the end of the problem. The average speed is rarely given. So I'm going to put 12 meters per second as my final speed during an 8 second time interval. Well, it says time interval. I recognize seconds as a unit of time. All right. But well, we said there has to be three given. So a lot of times there's kind of a third hidden given. And this comes from the fact that our bicyclist started off from rest. I don't see any motion lines behind the object, so our initial speed is zero meters per second. All right, so earlier we learned the average speed rule. If I have two of the speeds, I can find the third one. So I'm going to use the average speed equals the initial speed plus the final speed divided by two. All right, or really in this case, since the initial is zero, it's just the final speed divided by two, or six meters per second. Then I can find the distance by doing the average speed times the time. Alright, and I want to talk real quick about why this makes sense. So the bicyclist is speeding up from 0 to 12, moving with an increasing speed. But that's not how I want you to think about it. So when we're calculating the distance, think about that this bicyclist would travel just as far as a different bicyclist that was moving with a constant speed of 6 meters per second. That's what the average speed tells us, and that's why this equation works. So if I do 6 times 8, I get 48. And my units on that are meters, when I multiply meters per second times seconds, the seconds cancel out, and I know that distance should be measured in meters. All right. So how far does the bicyclist travel? We just answered that, how far is distance? So 48.0 meters. All right, let's go ahead and look at one more example problem. This one says a student drops the ball from a height of 60 meters. The ball remains in the air for 3.46 seconds to determine all unknowns and answer the question. All right, so again, looking for our three given. 60 meters is the distance. Now, keep in mind that different given are going to be, um, you might get different given in each problem. 3.4 seconds, that's my time. And then also, no motion lines at the start. The ball was dropped. That means it's going to start with no speed or initial speed of zero meters per second. All right, so in this case, I only have one of my speeds. So I need to use something else first. So to get my average speed, we can do the distance divided by the time. So if I plug that in, I get 17.3 meters per second. Make sure you keep at least three significant figures. More is okay, but don't keep less. All right, and then to get the final speed, I can use the equation that final speed equals two times the average speed minus the initial. Or in this case, just two times the average. So doubling that, I get 34.6 meters per second. The problem says, what was the ball speed just before striking the ground? That's going to be my final speed. And again, 34.6 meters per second. 